Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that the following program contains images of people who have died. Hey, what's up? Amelia here. Let's see what's making news. You might have noticed that social media is being flooded with images of plain black squares for what's being called Blackout Tuesday. The idea is to encourage people to reflect and learn more about racism. But the movement's also been controversial. It's the little black square that's making a big statement on social media. So what's it all about? Well, it first started as something the music industry was doing to show its support for George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests happening in America. What do we want? That's it! The idea was to disrupt people's day-to-day -day scrolling and make them stop and think about racial injustice. A lot of big-name artists got involved, like Rihanna, Drake and Katy Perry. And soon, the digital protest took on a life of its own, spreading far beyond music. In fact, hashtag Blackout Tuesdays now had more than 27 million tags on Instagram. But while it's had a lot of support, some people aren't fans and say it's causing some problems. You see, lots of people hashtagged Black Lives Matter on their Blackout Tuesday pics. But that hashtag's also being used to share important information and updates about the protests. It's now been overloaded by tiny black squares. So some protesters and activists are asking people to avoid using it. Overall, the organisers say they've been overwhelmed with the amount of support for the cause and want to remind people that while it was just a 24-hour campaign, there's still a long way to go. Today, people all around Australia are celebrating Mabo Day. Eddie Mabo successfully fought for Indigenous land rights and this date, June 3rd, marks the anniversary of an important High Court decision. Normally, there are big public events, but because of COVID-19, people are marking it online instead. I really hope all Australians understand the significance of this day and acknowledge it by celebrating this day. So I'd like to ask all non-Indigenous Australians to please help celebrate and educate others on just how significant this day was in the history of our country. If you've never seen this insect before, then you're not alone. It was recently discovered by a bunch of school kids in South Australia. Let's find out how they did it. Students at Ramco Primary School have discovered this new wasp. I felt very excited that we found a new species. I was quite happy that we found something here in the Riverland. Since Term 1, they've been busy collecting insects using these special traps. It's part of a project run by Dr Erin fagan Jeffries. She's an entomologist or insect scientist. So the job of a taxonomist is to take this new species and then write about it, take pictures, measure different things so that we can identify that species in the future. The last bit, is, of course, is to give it a name. So what are the kids from Ramco going to name their new discovery? The Ramco wasp. I'm thinking Reg 2020. I've thought of a name called Ramcona because it's got this school in it and it's also from the coronavirus. These guys will have a bit of time to think about it while Dr Erin finishes describing the species. Meanwhile, she's got some advice for anyone who wants to make their own history-making discovery. Be observant, have a look around you and take lots of notes, lots of pictures. You never know what you'll find. Now for some stories that would probably leave Goldilocks a little confused because we're not quite sure if they're too big, too small or just right. Giant panda, pretty large block of ice. Hmm, seems about right then. Panda keepers in China figured the big old bears might need some help cooling off in the summer heat. OK, this is too small, surely. It's Britain's smallest coffee shop, operating out of these two old red phone boxes. And the coffees are coming out normal sized, which should be just right, but feels wrong. I want Britain's smallest coffee. And forget your normal shoes, try this pair on for size. A Romanian shoemaker made a European size 75 shoe. Not for those with giant feet, but for those with average feet that want some help social distancing. I'm not sure if that makes them too big or just right for the job. And they'd even be better for social distancing if they were much, much bigger. So maybe they're too small. 
know what's just the right size? This show. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on seeing an episode. Thanks for watching.